All right, before you start a job like this, just as a service provider, you're gonna check a couple of things. You're gonna take note of water damage on the floor due to a clogged drain for a long time. You're gonna see some trim right there. You can see that water's puffed that up. You don't wanna be getting caught uh, messing something up because that's probably gonna chip off and you know, the homeowner's like, what the heck? At least you have some something to show for yourself, you know? This is a pretty involved job. You will be moving a refrigerator that hasn't moved in 20 years. All right, guys, step one, deinstall unit. Take off your trim strips, which are located right here on the side. And you're gonna unscrew all of the screws that hold the machine in. Voila, unit out on the masonite. We're gonna move it 90 degrees. All right, unit is out. It is tilted. We have access to both evaporator panels. And then we have Joe back here zipping off the heat exchanger cover in the back. Okay, heat exchanger is in the back. Feed right down into the mechanical shelf on the bottom. We're gonna be replacing these. The evaporator panels are both off, exposing the evaporator. Now we are removing all of the screws from the tracks. That will allow us access to the heat exchange on the left side. At this point, you go out to your truck, you get your parts. We have evaporators, two different style heat exchangers. Uh, you need to check with your parts department to make sure you have the right heat exchangers because if you use something too long, you're going to be very unhappy because uh, you have limited space in the mechanical shelf down there to operate. And then we got some valves in here. Those are the solenoid valves. Moving thermistor connections, letting them dangle and hang. Our fan motor up there stays. Uh, we're going to be cutting here and here and removing the heat exchangers from the back and down. Your heat exchange comes packaged on the right, kind of folded up. We're gonna straighten it out like the heat exchange on the left. Leave the hook at the end. All right, we cut out the old evaporators. We have the new evaporators right there. We have removed the heat exchangers through their holes that feed the evaporators. Um, and they're gonna slide through the hole on the bottom and come out with the mechanical shelf. We'll probably just cut them. Pulling out the mechanical shelf now. Interior is pretty much stripped. Okay, the front compressor of the mechanical shelf is for your upper system. It runs a heat exchanger. A copper line in a circle. It's very complicated, but it's very not complicated at the same time. Makes a, makes a circle comes around the side here and ends up being screwed into the ceiling right there just the screw Phillips head you remove that screw it will drop down a three-way connection uh, that three-way connection branches off to each heat exchange that's all you have to know we're going to replace behind that T we know there is no leak in front of it we have tested it with nitrogen once the T-fitting is off the ceiling, you will see on the right side, as it comes into the T, that's coming from your compressor. You can trace it right back. On the left side, that goes up to the upper evaporator and on the back to the lower. So we're not gonna replace that T. It's not leaking. We're gonna cut behind it and start soldering on our heat exchangers. Make your cuts on these with a copper cutter, like so, miniature style. Make them clean. So we're gonna use cup links to re-solder. All right, Joe, pull the heat exchanger out. It's all disconnected. And there it goes. It's gonna go right out towards the back there. Right out the back. And he's trying to just pull it through and he's gonna get it. Once he's done with that, he will show his prize. Yay. Good job, Joe. This is your best method here. 
to get this all in one piece cleanly. You solder the evaporator to the heat exchange right here uh, outside the unit. And then when we fish it through, we fish it in from the capillary first, the bottom of the low side, uh, right through the holes, and then into its resting position inside the upper compartment with the evaporator. Okay, we're getting to soldering our new heat exchanges in place into our T. And once we do so, Joe can take these. Once we do so, we are going to wrap the capillaries. A beer can is a good size for this. It keeps these long capillary tubes in nice shape out of the way. And nice circular pattern and we'll zip tie them together. But basically, there you go. You got a nice capillary run and we'll run that right into the filter valves. Thank you. Okay, we have currently evaporators in place. Uh, we have heat exchangers puttied, routed down to the bottom, strapped into place. Definitely strap them into place, screw them back into where they came from. You use the same connectors you took out. Uh, next, let's get into changing the solenoids on this unit. It's a very simple sealed system job. It's a little tight. Your solenoids are located, screwed into the condenser right there, upper and lower. Believe that they are definitely labeled. Not like it matters, I think they are the same uh, unit. So if you mix them up, no big deal. But you do have to know which heat exchanger capillary is for what side. And we have our lower right here. All right. Since we are changing the filter as well as both the valves and the capillaries are already cut, it will simply pop out of place if we just remove each screw on the condenser one and two, and then we will take this out and mimic it uh, and change all the copper connections and all the valves and the filter all at once. And then we'll simply just solder it back into place into the condenser and we'll get the capillaries into the back side of it. You'll see. Okay, filter and valve assemblies out. We are going to mimic that out of the unit before we solder it all back into place. You can see each valve has a electrical connection and they're labeled upper, lower. I've been uh, using this trend of putting red tape on everything that denotes lower. So this is a lower heat exchange. Uh, the assemblies here, the uh, electrical assemblies here, the, the clips, I, uh, I tape the lower with red just to keep that trend going red. You can easily just look at the wiring diagram, but I don't really feel like pulling that out right now. and. Uh, it's easier, so do that. Okay, got my valves all soldered together with the new filter. We'll get it back into place. Capillaries go upper, lower, then we'll be ready to evacuate and charge. Okay, so we've done a pretty decent job here installing a new filter. We've got new valves in there. They are connected, and we are under a nitrogen load of about 130 pounds, which indicates we don't have any leaks anywhere. Um, we're going to Proceed now to a recharge and put this all back together. Looking good. Okay, we're all charged up. Mechanical shelf is back in. Joe is putting back on the wine cooler uh, shelf racks and rear plates for the evaporators. Charged up pretty good. We've got the Uh, evaporator panel back on, or the heat exchange cover. And this thing should work great. All right, we're reinstalled here. We have good pressure on the low side of the compressor. Uh, putting the mechanical shelf back in, if you do everything uh, with the idea that, you know, you're going to be putting a shelf back in, keeping the heat exchangers high up towards the ceiling, it goes in much easier. Um, you know, so that's what you do. You just slide the, the mechanical shelf back in. Sometimes you gotta use your feet, push it in, get it, get it in place, make sure the fan's still spinning. Uh, if the refrigerator's got good pressure, low 
uh, lower wine cooler and upper wine cooler, you're in good shape. Uh, good pressure, you know, on this on the rebuild, 10 pounds is, you know, you got, if you're holding 10, you're probably pretty good. Uh, and now we're just putting it all back together. We're gonna get these lower drawers in, which is a story for another day, uh, another system that this unit utilizes, and that's it, and we're ready to go.